Yeah, don't you forget who I am. I'm Bruce freaking Willis. So you take that hot dog and you eat it. Oh, God. Oh, Mr. Executive, I didn't notice I'd walked into your office. What can I do you for, Bruce? I want to make this movie. It's a movie I promised a childhood friend I'd make, so we should get right on it. Uh, Bruce, what's this movie about? What do you mean, what's this movie about? Why does that matter? (laughs) Well, I can't just make any movie that every maniac brings in here. Wait, aren't you the guy who okays Steven Seagal movies? See, that's exactly why I have to start asking what the movies are about. You're, you're really going to pull this with me? Really? Let me ask you this, asshole. Who's your second pick to play Eddie Hawkins in this movie? I'm not making the movie, so no one. That's what I thought. We start on Monday. What? Bruce, that's not how negotiations work. Oh, really? Well, let me ask you this, asshole. Who's your second pick to play Bruce Willis in this negotiation? Uh, I don't even know how to answer that. That's what I thought. We start on Monday. But I don't even know what the name of the film is. Pay attention! It's called... Hudson Hawk. They irritate the irritated. Flex perplexities. Poise puzzles. Magnify mysteries. Impose inquiries. And coagulate quandaries. But more importantly, they ask one question. Why would you make this? Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for listening. This is Why Would You Make This, the only podcast to forget what day it told everyone we were going to record and has to hurriedly ask the question, why would you make this? I am Jimmy Time. I literally wrote this script one hour ago. I am joined (laughs) by huge. Literally, I hate you every time you do it. Oh, you hate it? I thought you loved it. That's why I keep doing it. As I'm reading in the script my own name... And there's five E's in it. I, and just two what? seconds ago, I'm reading hey, it for the first hey, time. Hey, that's four. That's four E's. <sighs> but the, and the fourth one's capitalized. It is. That's, that's the important the one. Part. That's the best one. But that's, that's the fear, is I'm reading it line by line as you're saying it, and then I realized all the E's, I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. no. It's happening. What have I done? He's summoning the Ferox. <laughs> all right. All right, so yeah, we watched Hudson Hawk. Yes, we did. Which was released May 24th, 1991. Yes, we did. Uh, all around the world until Japan received it September 21st, 1991. You had a few months to prepare Japan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, then Greece, for some reason, received a DVD release October 12th, 1999. <laughs> they, like, they held out as long as they could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, eventually. That was the first breaking point in the Greece economy. It's like, <laughs> oh. Things are getting so bad, we have to let Hudson Hawk into the country. Yeah, as soon as it came in, that's when the refugees started getting out of there, I'm pretty sure. (laughs) The refugees started getting out, and Hudson Hawk started getting in. Ah. Cracks in the Parthenon. What a trade-off. Started to appear. (laughs) Parthenon. All right, so, of course, this film was lost in translation. The working title was The Adventures of Hudson Hawk. So that's what we didn't get. Uh, but the film was indeed called Hudson Hawk, which is where, what they called it in Bulgaria, the Soviet Union, and Turkey. In French Canada, they called it Hudson Hawk, Gentleman, and Burglar, oh, okay. which is slightly different from France, where they called it Hudson Hawk, Gentleman, Burglar. I, I think I like that. I just drop the end. The, yeah, right, Gentleman, yeah. Burglar. That gives it such a different vibe, yeah. I feel. Yeah, right? Uh, Austria called it Hudson Hawk, Master Thief, which is also what Germany called it. Mm-hmm. Uh, or excuse me, sorry, they called it The Master Thief. Austrian Denmark just called it Master Thief. And Sweden called it Master Peace, which I'm pretty sure was a translation error. Had to be Master Thief. <laughs> Has to be. Those There's Swedes. no way. Uh, oh, you think, like, bless the Swedes? Like, no. <laughs> bless the Italians who called it Hudson Hawk, the Wizard of Theft. Hungary called it Hudson Hawk, a master thief is worth gold. So I had to like, that's not what it, it can't be that. So I messed with the translation. It could either be one master thief gold vein. <laughs> or what is likely the actual title, a master thief takes gold. So you're really giving them credit. I know. I'm <laughs> you trying. You don't know for sure. I don't. I'm trying. Thing. What I do know for sure is that Finland called this film Hudson Hawk Best of Thieves. 
That is such a – that's much better yes. than everything I've heard so far. And I, the only reason I know that is because it was translated by Dr. Chris Spar from the unaccredited school of Moodly Boodly. Greece. Why am I here? Because <laughs> you ain't got nothing else going on God in your life, baby. This is accurate. This, this or an empty closet. <sighs> what? What? <laughs> The closet gives you warmth. The closed space is like, ah, no But it's can... empty, so uh, just please move on. <laughs> yeah, like I said, Greece. They called the film The Hawk. They focused way too much on the bird aspect of this. <laughs> so did the rest of these, because Spain called it The Great Falcon. <laughs> Sweden, another title in Sweden, because Sweden already mistranslated it as Masterpiece. They also mistranslated it as The Hook is Loose. <laughs> like, it's a sequel to Hook, the fucking Dustin Hoffman film. Oh my god, no. <laughs> that I would watch. It's probably The Hawk is Loose. Uh, Mexico called it The Falcon is Loose. Brazil called it Hudson Hawk. The Falcon is on the loose. And Portugal, they made it a sequel because they called it Hudson Hawk. The Falcon attacks again. Now, okay. This last one I have a problem with. Yeah. If they have the word Hawk in there, then why would it be The Falcon? (laughs) I don't know. I got no clue. They just don't know what birds are in Portugal. It makes it seem as though it's a nature documentary where these two birds are fighting each other. (laughs) The story of the the hawk that lives in the Hudson River. And then this falcon is attacking his nest. Again, again. Again, I'd watch this. (laughs) Who wouldn't? (laughs) Uh, So next we go to the budget. Mr. Danny Money, not here. Uh, You, would you like to... Well, basically, if Danny Money were here, he would say that in an estimate, it would be about $65 which is a lot for $1991. And uh, it took back... uh, a little less than that, about a uh, seventeen and a quarter, nineteen ninety one dollars. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, million million dollars. Yes, uh, well, yeah, uh, which well, is like a quarter of the budget. Yeah, about a little bit more than, or yeah, a little bit. Yeah, more than more a than a quarter of the Interestingly budget. Interestingly like enough, maybe though, less than that, whatever. is uh, in a little making of, I guess, for the DVD that came out a few years ago. Bruce Willis, who defends this movie to the death, says that it's made back in, I guess. DVD sales, it's, he says it's in the black, quote-unquote. Yeah, but we don't have those numbers, oh, so we, we don't, don't know we do that. that. <laughs> Just have to take his word for it, I guess, <laughs> you know? All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the best hour. Oh, our favorite hour. Our favorite hour! The Troy McClure hour. He's taking a sip of water to prepare himself. It's all going to get deleted. God damn it. It doesn't matter. It's all going to get deleted. <laughs> Hello, I'm Troy McClure. You'll recognize me from such sing-a-ding-sing-good-time movies as Honey Boo Boo's Banjo Hootenanny or High School Musical 9. College Seniors, now it really begins! Something I learned today is that Hootenanny is a real word. Yeah! Because I tried to spell it, they went, nope, this is how you spell <laughs> no. it, son. There's no eyes in Hootenanny. <laughs> I thought it was all eyes. Bruce Willis plays Hudson Hawk. You'll recognize him as John McClane from the 1998 Die Hard series. Or the ongoing Die Hard series, because I think they're going to make another Die Hard movie. Damn straight they are. You can call it that. Uh, Corbin Dallas in the 1997 The Fifth Element. Short Corbin Dallas. No, he... Corbin Dallas. All right. And most recently, Hubert from the 2016 Marauders. Danny Aiello plays Tommy Five-Tone, who I throughout the entire movie called Tommy (laughs) (laughs) Two-Tone. That's just me. Uh, You'll recognize him as Tony Rosato in the 1974 The Godfather Part Mm 2, Tony in the 1984 Leon Professional, and most recently Father Paul in the 2014 Reach Me. Finally, Andy McDowell plays Anna (laughs) Baragili. Yep, I'm Italian. How's everybody doing? <laughs> you disgust me. <laughs> Barajli. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You recognize her as Rita from the 1993 Groundhog's Day. Uh, Shelly Snipe from the 1999 Muppets in Space. That's right. <laughs> we take care of our own here. Puppets. Puppets are people. Uh, and most recently, Margaret Henderson in the 2017 episode, The Verdict of the Ongoing Trial and Error. Hmm. You can see the full cast and crew at imdb.com. 
Yeah. Surprisingly good cast. You had James Colburn in there from The Great Escape. Yeah. You had some you had some good people. Uh what's that guy with the glasses? Caruso? David Caruso? Uh he is in there. Yeah, he's in there. Was it Kit Kat? Yes. Um Kit Kat. and then Richard E. Grant played um uh Mayflower. Darwin Mayflower. Yeah, Mayf- but yeah. he was also goes on I guess he loses his billions and then he goes on to be the manager of the Spice Girls in Spice World. Oh right, yes. <laughs> oh, I totally forgot about that. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Gonna inadvertently make you guest star on all movies that Richard E. Grant is in. <laughs> well, my job is done here because <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the one, one and only one, or these two. Uh, yeah, Sandra Bernhardt also Ugh. great at comedy. Ugh. What? I was so upset. You didn't like her? I, no. <laughs> Don't be mad at me, baby. <laughs> It's so over the top. It's awful. I know. <laughs> That's not her over the top. I know. She was acting. That's how she comes home at night. She graduated from the John Lovett School of Acting. <laughs> oh, the, who gave him a school? Acting! Alright, let's actually start the film. So, a narrator who I am told by the DVD, which has so much information on it, there, there's commentary, which I didn't get to watch all of, and there's also a Hudson Hawk trivia track, which is like a like a pop up video, you know, of Ooh, its time. I miss pop up. I know it was so good. I didn't even like music. I just like the pop ups. <laughs> <laughs> just come on, just go ahead and throw random trivia at me. Can I read it before it's gone? I don't, I don't know. Need the trivia, just a little sound. So yeah, they let me know that the narrator is the old narrator for the Rocky and Bullwinkle cartoons. That's awesome. Yeah. It's also not Still surprising, alive. considering how cartoonish. Oh, wait, 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 I thought you were you were amazed at the fact that he was in this film. You're no, amazed at the fact that he's, he's still, still alive. alive. This was 91. Yeah, first he was old in when he was doing the narration. That was 30 years before this. All right, all right. I'm not going to argue this this man's age. I don't know anything about that. Oh, flip this table. <laughs> the microphones are attached to you. <laughs> Please don't. There's a rabbit on the table. Oh, that's true. It's stuff. It's fine, folks. Don't worry. So he reads a book about Leonardo da Vinci, about how he, co- he was commissioned to make a machine that turns lead into bronze. Is this historically accurate? That's my first question. Oh, no. There is no machine that makes lead into bronze or any. There's no transmutation machine at all, first off. All right. Tom Hanks would have found that. Uh, yeah, that's it's a different. I'm not going to lie. When you told me a week ago I'd be watching a movie about a globetrotting adventure with an A-list Hollywood actor... You know, trying to uncover some conspiracy involving Leonardo da Vinci, I assumed that we were talking about the Da Vinci Code and subsequent sequels. That probably would have been a fair assessment. But now you've learned about this terrible masterpiece, (laughs) and you've been subjugated against it. So we enter a castle, and Leonardo confidently walks around as his workshop is very busy, and the people are making the machine turn on. Uh, da Vinci, Da Vinci, excuse me, makes the bronze and he removes this crystal from the machine. I guess that makes it work. He takes it apart, puts it away, and then he checks on all of his famous inventions, like, oh, that he hasn't made yet, excuse me, the famous inventions he has yet to make, like the Mona Lisa and the flying machine, and I'm sure there was stuff in the background that I didn't notice. (laughs) Yeah, the attention to detail. Yeah. I'm already like, (laughs) fuck this film, because... Uh, already, this movie is entirely predicated on the complete hardcore pseudoscience that somehow I'm supposed to believe that the Italian word for gold is gold. <laughs> First off, I don't know what version you saw. I watched this online uh, the illegal way. Yeah. Because it was the only way I could get to it. Sure. And so well, whatever I, website I was on yeah. had specific um, – it had subtitles going throughout the entire thing. Oh, okay. Even in, in English, there were mm-hmm. subtitles. So – Whenever there was anything Italian, it didn't tell me what it did. <laughs> so I don't know if, if every version is like this, but... Yeah, no, there were no subtitles. It, it, oh, okay, on mine, it would just say, like, speaking Italian. And then when something would happen, it'd be screaming Italian. Yeah, yeah, Or yeah. terrified in Italian. Yeah. And then when Da Vinci is on the flying machine, and he goes over the cliff, it just says screaming in horror in Italian. <laughs> No, no, he wasn't. <laughs> no words. You can't scream in an accent, <laughs> yeah. I don't think. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, but they're like, they're always like, ah, it's a pazzo, get to be you. And then he, they make the gold and they go, oh, gold, gold, oh, gold, gold. That's gold, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Uh, I'll let you know right now that there's probably nothing great happening in the commentary because the director says in the commentary that he's not going to give any of the dirt on the film until the microchip version comes out and everybody's dead. <laughs> yeah, I, much like you, have to presume that he knows so much more about the coming robot wars than, than we do because clearly there's something to be horrified about. Uh, but there is some things that he probably could have told us because he did then tell us that the beard that Da Vinci is wearing in this scene was lost in customs at the border and it halted production for like a day and a half <laughs> where they had to go like build a new beard. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So yeah, he checks on his machines. He pushes a guy off a cliff <laughs> with his flying machine and it flies. Yeah. We jump to 500 years later in New York. Uh, Eddie Hawkins, or Eddie Hudson Hawk, he's getting out of prison, and immediately a dirty cop is like, I got a job for you, you gotta go steal this stuff, otherwise I'll set you up again, anytime, anywhere, I can do that. And he's like, eh, do it yourself, and he leaves. And we go outside, and Tommy Two-Tone, is what I think his name is already, <laughs> it's Tommy Five-Tone, he picks up Eddie in prison, they mock each other, Eddie mocks his weight, he's like, ah, you're getting a little chubby around, and they drive off. Slight right. Nintendo references thrown in there. Yes, they, they are already doing Nintendo references, they do some more in the car next, where they, they catch up and all, they tell everybody what's going on, oh, they set me up to do a job, like, oh, you're playing Nintendo, I don't know what Nintendo is, I've been away for ten years. Gives him a cappuccino, but he hits the, but, yeah. Uh, Tommy hits the brakes too hard. Ah, oh, I had the perfect amount of foam. Oh, no. Oh. I can't he drink it now. cappuccinos. Yes. So we go to a bar. It turns out it's a bar that Tommy owns, but a lot has changed since uh, Eddie was in prison. And now there's a bunch of yuppies in the club. They don't really spell it out, but that, the, the commentary said that that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be jokes about how yuppies are everywhere in 1991. And, uh. Uh, look at them. Uh, I can't believe these guys are here. Yeah. And, uh, but it turns out, oh, don't worry. This half this club is yours, uh, you know, Hudson Hawk. And he's like, ah, oh, let me get a cappuccino. And he goes to drink it, but, but you, but you, the Mario Brothers shoot it out of his hands. The Mario Brothers? Yeah. I really did not expect the Mario Brothers to be played by Frank, Frank Stallone. Stallone. <laughs> yeah. What? Really? Okay. Frank Stallone's in the film now. And it turns out that the job that the dirty cop wanted him to do was a job that the Mario Brothers want him to do. So that again, what a coincidence! And they're like, "Hey, you got to do this job, otherwise we're gonna cut off your junk or something like that." I forget what they say. I don't really care. <laughs> and so they go into the basement, like they just jump to into the basement, I presume, of the bar. And they're like, oh, "All right, we got to do this job. Like, let's go over the <laughs> the length of songs and plans." Oh my god, the songs. That's, I don't know if you noticed it, because I only notice it like every like other time they do it. Every time somebody mentions a song in the movie... He, he tells what the exact duration of yeah, the song is. absolutely. Because that's what he does his um, crimes to, I guess. Yeah, that's like his, uh, his Marvel superpower, if you will. He knows the <laughs> length of any song you tell him. Which I wish they'd go more into him doing that like as a kid or something, where he had this useless talent, and then he finally puts it to good use. Because otherwise, it just is completely meaningless. Because he'll just be like, yep, 632. <laughs> He's like the world's most, like, in-your-face rain man. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. We already skipped it, but in the car, because I got the DVD, it has deleted scenes. In the car. Wait, there's things that they left out? Oh, yeah, of this two-hour film? Yeah. my God. In the car, uh, Eddie Hudson Hawk goes, hey, where's, uh, what's his name? I think it's Little Eddie. He goes, where's Little Eddie? And he goes... Oh, man. Little Eddie. He got whacked in a drive-by. He's dead. Who's Little Eddie? Take a guess. Take a guess who Little Eddie is. I don't want to... Go ahead. Come on. Guess. All right. So, Little Eddie. (laughs) Yeah. Is it someone named Eddie in real life? Oh, in re- like in real life? Yeah. I don't know. I didn't look up their name, so... I don't oh, know. I thought it, I thought it was because it was a big-time actor. No. Oh, this is an animal? <laughs> yeah. Is it a dog? No. Oh, what is it? It's a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Hudson Hawk has a pet monkey. I think his first name was called Little Eddie, but he got whacked in a drive-by by the Mario Brothers. And they... Co- oh, <laughs> God, it just hit me. <laughs> it just hit me. Uh, Did he use a barrel? Yeah, they, they the barreled them down. They, <sighs> they barreled down the street when they shot, I forget, the whole thing. I was just like, I can't believe 
They gotta, they gotta bend my I'm upset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should be. <laughs> so, uh, Eddie, in the basement, they, he has second thoughts about doing the job, and he wants to go straight, but they talk it out, and they're like, all right, we're gonna do it. Uh, yeah. He shows he still has some skills. They go to the break-in. They're walking down the street talking about song lengths again. More mm-hmm. song lengths. Uh, suddenly they're inside a pool roof and they're still in the rope dividers in the pools. They're using it to like lasso to the next building. They get in there, they cut open a window, they climb inside the whole time. Hudson Hawk's joking around. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, what'd, no you, what'd you eat? Uh, what'd you eat, Tommy? I don't know why. Cause this rope only holds this much. Ah, no, we're going to fall. I'm, I'm, I'm into it so far. It's, it's a little bit too quick pace, but it's, it's like a, like a caper film. It's like Ocean's Eleven. I'm yeah. really quick. quick I'll jokes. admit it is a little fast paced. Yeah. But it, yeah, I'm this I'm having fun with it. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah, it's not we're, bad. We're feeling good. All yeah. right. Yeah. Let's continue. Uh so we go inside and a fat guard breaks a chair that I gotta be honest, may or may not be an actual <laughs> art piece. Like it's in a museum. <laughs> It's bright blue. Like, it looks like it's an art piece. It's got some gold trim to it, he too. He sits on it and yeah. just breaks the shit out of it. Those two were bullies. Those two other guards, they were bullies. Oh, well, because they made a fat man break a chair? Is that what tipped you off to it? It wasn't the jokes they were making about Chinese people with the phone book <laughs> earlier? <laughs> First off, A, I do not condone racism any kind. <laughs> B, I do, however, condone puns and dad <laughs> jokes and horrible jokes of all shapes and sizes, and I fucking loved. I instantly stole it. That, yeah. I instantly stole oh. it, and like just yesterday, I was like, "Too many Wong numbers." Ah, oh. so good. That's ter- you're terrible. You wait, like out of context, you just walk up to people. Hey, no, too, I, many, too many Wong numbers, eh? No, I I constructed my own elaborate just, joke. You just you just walk around the park, wait for somebody's phone to ring, go. Oh, I guess it's the Wong number, huh? And then, and then you walk put my away. head down and walk away slowly. <laughs> next time, next time I'm gonna get him. This this movie had some jokes. It had some. That's what made me more upset was that for every joke, fuck you, Wong numbers is is funny. For or like, not for me no. On paper, there's some funny jokes. Like for instance. Not to get too off topic, but there's a, a part where he's on a gurney, fucking going down the the highway. All right, and and he he says, uh, "How's my driving? Call one eight hundred. I'm gonna fucking die." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when the movie starts to pick up. Look, I'm not yeah. saying oh, movies. I'm so- look, it's. You continue. Well, yeah. So far, we're doing good. Look, yeah, yeah. it's a good, good movie. So inside, they sneak around on skateboards. All right, now hold on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What? What's wrong? It just bothered me when I saw it. Like, I get that they're trying to sneak around, and even Hudson Hawk being on his stomach and just kind of, like, doggy paddling with his, like, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, that was... But the position that Danny Aiello was in was, like, this weird yoga namaste fucking... Why did he have to be in that position? It's the only way he fit on the skateboard, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so... All right, I'm for it. Yeah, it's I'm fine. Ready. They go ahead and they set up the security to record in the loop so that while they're doing their thing, they'll only see the recording that already happened. They won't see them walking around. Mm-hmm. So they sing a song like they planned you to keep time, Swinging on a Star. Ah, uh, Swinging on a Star. <laughs> do you ah uh, the way they sing it, though? Or you, do you ah uh, to reminisce a better time that it was sung? First up, uh, well... Because they... Danny Aiello's got... He's got... As the kids say, bars. But he's got bars. He's got bars. He's he can he can float a tune. He's got some. He's crooning. Yeah, I'm sure he floats. Uh, they all float. Down. <laughs> what? What, are you, what? All right. So they sing a song and steal a horse statue that was in <laughs> what? That's totally that's totally normal. Say that sentence again. <laughs> they sing a song and steal a horse statue. Wasn't over by the way. That was in Da Vinci's castle 500 years earlier. All right. I'm still, it's, it's still, I'm with it. This, it's not a bad movie. So as they finish the song, the guards notice that, hey, what, remember that chair that the fat guy broke? How come it's in that recording? Oh, that means somebody looped the video back. That's what that always means. Um, it's the third time this week. <laughs> that happens all the time. <laughs> yeah. We had this in the training manual. <laughs> Someone loops the footage. They run to the fat guy. He's like knocked over the vending machines. He's eating like, ah, you got to stop looping back the footage so he can eat stuff. I feel bad about that. <laughs> I'm sorry, fat guy. I didn't mean to hurt you. You're allowed to eat vending machines. He's dead now. 
from eating a vending machine. You can't eat the whole machine. You're not supposed to. I meant like diabetes or old age, maybe. <laughs> from a machine? I didn't he eat the entire machine. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, of course he did. Oh shit. <laughs> machine abetes. <laughs> so they run to the roof to try to escape, but they covered their tracks. So they have to jump off the roof into the entrance awning. And they go, here we go! Ah! And they jump off and they land boop boop inside the gangster. Oh, excuse me, only Hudson Hawk lands inside the gangster's house. Tommy Two Tone's just gone forever. <laughs> <laughs> he, she's transported into another dimension. <laughs> so here's my question. No, no. You're, you're already hurting yourself by asking <laughs> something. <laughs> no, but here's my question. Because every episode, there comes a point where we go, obviously, they died. And the rest of this film is a, <laughs> is a death hallucination. So did it, did it, my question is, them jumping off the roof, yeah. is that them dying? Oh, absolutely. Really? Now, now Bruce Willis, is, Hudson Hawk, is in a coma. Okay. For the rest of this, and and he's and he's slipping into you know death. He's a piece of he's on death's door, which is interesting because this is super spoilers here. Danny Aiello, uh, Tommy Five Tone was in a, a horror movie a year earlier, uh, I believe a year earlier. Jacob's Ladder, okay. great horror movie, and big twist. That entire fucking movie is exactly it's that. A death dream. It's a whole fucking it's all death just dream. One. Yeah. Okay. So, because I'm also saying, what if? Hudson Hawk died in prison, and this whole movie is a death dream because oh, he's dead in prison. Shit, yeah. Right when he came out, do this mission. No, bang! Cop <laughs> shot him before he got out of prison. <laughs> Gates. <laughs> so Gates, what? That was the name of the the guy, wasn't it? Gates. Oh, I don't know. Pretty sure. I'm not Gates. sure. You, didn't you see this an hour ago? Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter because when he falls into the gangster's house, he gives him the horse and he's like, yeah, we got but the who, horse. Who was there? Gates. And then Gates gets his throat yeah, slit Yeah, because he gives it to the British man. Fucking... I love that the, the British guy goes, this horse is priceless. <laughs> Wong! And just breaks it over the dirty cop's head. And the dirty cop goes, where's my cut? And he goes, here it is. And quack, cuts his neck. He's dead. Frank Stallone and crew are like, ha, that's great. Well, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> And everybody leaves. And everyone sings fucking swinging on a star. Yeah, oh, would you rather be a fish? They all just walk out. Everybody leaves. We go to the bar again. Hawk tells Tommy everything that happened, and he's and Tommy's totally calm about it. And then he shows him a newspaper that says that robbery that they successfully committed last night was actually foiled, and the the item that they stole is going to be successfully auctioned off tonight. And Hudson Hawk's like, ah, I better get my tuxedo. <laughs> And I'm like, how did, like, wasn't Hudson Hawk the, like, world's most renowned security, or excuse me, cat burglar? Yeah. So how did three security guards not recognize him? Well, because he's been gone for ten years. Oh, so then it's not, like, something that would be noticeable to the layman? Yeah. Oh. Plus, you have to imagine that that, uh, that museum, because it was all Vatican shit, maybe they were doing a tour, and that's why it was like they were just there for that one night to do that cool auction, and they were fucking out of there. What do you mean? Well, because the... Oh, no, like in like the next scene where they go to the auction? Yeah. No, no, I don't... Because he does recognize him later on. Oh, are you talking about I, was the, talking, I, I just oh, mean afterwards. in general. They go, it was, it was foiled. I'm like saying, how come the security guards didn't that's go? True. That's Hudson Hawk. We all know him. Yeah. World's most renowned cat burglar. They were distracted by racism and whatever was in those vending machines. Sandwiches. And the song, of course. And the song in their heart, <laughs> Would yes. you rather be a mule? I could eat a whole mule. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I didn't really expect this movie to be all fat jokes, i got to be honest. <laughs> that's the last thing I expected. But that's the direction I went with, and it's not going to die anytime soon. Right. Unlike a fat guy's heart. <laughs> well, here's the first time I'm going to say this, and here it comes. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we go to an auction, and people casually raise their hands as large numbers get larger, and it's followed by a gunshot, because that's what gavels sound like to me. Hudson Hawk sits down, he meets a cute woman who is equally who equally dislikes auctions. Yeah. And then he notices that there's a lot of people eating candy bars name out. Product placement there. Mm-hmm. But only that one place, that nowhere else. <laughs> Uh, the woman then gets up to reveal that she's a doctor from the Vatican, and she confirms that the horse that they're about to au- auction off is absolutely the real thing, and then she makes a phone call. 
Uh, a very obnoxious rich man walks in. He goes, I will pay $100 million for this horse. And then his equally obnoxious lover comes in and she goes, I will pay $101 million for this horse. And the auctioneer goes, yes, she will pay $100 million and a dollar. Like he, and I, that's the way I got it. He interpreted it wrong. She was going to pay $101 million. Yeah. And 100 he, million and one. A million, yeah, 100 million dollars and then also a dollar. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've been outbid by my own wench. I didn't like these guys. Like, they oh. were good villains because I already didn't like God. them. I was like, I don't like these yeah. fucking guys. True heels. Right. Yeah. They had, yeah. They had X-Pac heat. Ms. Level heat, yeah. That's the new one. <laughs> X-Pac, he didn't, he did nothing wrong. Miz does everything <laughs> he wrong. Do a, he didn't do a Hitler except it's like <laughs> X Pac. X Pac did nothing wrong. Wait a minute, are you comparing X Pac to Hitler? No, but that's the that's the meme. Is the Hitler did is nothing China wrong. Ava Braun? Oh man, one night in Ava. That's a whole different porno. Black lipstick. Well, here's the second one. Continue. <laughs> Continue on that no, 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 train of no, thought. No. There's Triple H Goebbels. Is that how that works? Let me let me oh. stop your train oh, okay, of thought before sorry. it derails and destroys an entire city. <laughs> and also the Jews that it's carrying on that train. Oh, oh my God. boy! Oh, I did it. My apologies to the Jewish community. Who would you rather be, a pig? See, I chose pig now because this Jewish the kosher thing. So now you're being offensive. No, I'm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, got him. All right, so the they uh, sold for whatever amount of money you guys just said, and a fat guard enters and he goes, "That's Hudson Hawk." But then the doctor, whose name is Anne, I don't know if we learned it yet, but Doctor Anne from the Vatican trips the fat guy and he falls. And I'm not sure if if it's the guy falling or the bang of the gavel, which we've already heard bang several times. There's a giant explosion when one of the two hits the the, the ground, and everything blows up. And uh, Hudson Hawk sees a pillar that's about to crush Anne, and he runs and he saves her, and she's super casual about it. She's like, "Thanks for ripping my dress. You didn't do anything." Yeah, it's got some. It's got some clever, some some smarmy, snappy some, dialogue. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can yeah, still feel yeah. it. I'll... She's like, like way, way too uh, smarmy. Not smarmy. I'm trying to think of the word. That's not the word. Like just casual about it. She's just fucking really laid back about the whole. Very, fucking... very matter. The whole. Well, the whole movie is like that. Uh, half of it, yeah. Well, that that's the other true. half is like up to twenty. Like, <laughs> forget about eleven. It kept going. Like, it only goes up to eleven, but then they started drawing numbers on the dial and and, and just drew a new arrow and it goes to twenty now. This movie really is half Ocean's Eleven, half Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kept I kept like thinking it's like it's got a very like Beetlejuice vibe to it. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's what it is. I had it listed as. I was trying to pe- peg the genre as it was happening, as I'm watching it, so I had it as a comedy, action, thriller, heist musical. <laughs> no, no thank you. I... No thank you, sir. I do <laughs> not want to see that. So, yeah, he saves Anna from a statue, or excuse me, from a pillar, and then this flying horse statue suddenly just swings out of the sky and hits him in the face. He gets knocked out. So that means he's also dead. Like, if he wasn't dead before, he's dead now. Oh, and there's also another... Like, he's... He's... In- he's inceptioned into his death dream. Now, with all the horses trying to kill people or horses being dis- demolished, is there some sort of incident in the director's past? Or, right? right? Something was Bruce Willis scared by a horse as a kid? Something. And now yeah. they're just evil in his mind? Horses are evil. I want to go back and see. He did a movie a few years after this, Last Man Standing, that was like a weird, very weird, almost sci-fi western movie he did. Okay. And, uh, oh, that's I'm sure this is one of the ones that you'll be seeing eventually because it's <laughs> sure. it's it's a real prize of a movie. <laughs> but um, but I have to see how many horses he interacts with in that one too. Punches nine horses. <laughs> I think he's too scared of the horses. <laughs> oh, he pays nine people to punch a horse. <laughs> Go gang fight that horse. Dude, would you rather be a horse? That's not, I told you that's not a lie. I don't no, care. All right, fine. <laughs> so, turns out that the Mario brothers have Hawk in the back of an ambulance. You, got, you gotta stop calling them that. <laughs> I'm, I'm being thrown off completely by well, this. Listen, it's your choice. I can call them the Mario brothers, or I can call them Frank Stallone and gang. <laughs> like, there's only two ways I can address God, them. And it. they're both terrible. 
Uh, you know what? You pick your poison, and I'm I'm fine with either. <laughs> it's it's actual poison. So I don't have to do this <laughs> yeah, film. Either way, <laughs> cyanide. So, Hawk reaches and grabs a thing full of needles that are apparently just face up and throws them into one of the henchmen's faces. <laughs> Uh, as he, his custom. Uh, yeah. As, as his custom of, of ambulance <laughs> driving. Ambulance. Uh, he jumps out of the back on a gurney, and he's getting pulled behind it because there's a sheet stuck on it. This is when, like, the like it starts going to, to, to 20. Just, what are you doing? There's a guy with, like, 18 needles in his face. He's being dragged in a gurney. Uh, this hot woman in a, like, uh, what do you call it, a convertible, just pulls up next to him. She goes, hey, mister, are you going to die? And they keep driving away. Like, You're forgetting the best part of that scene. What's he's, that? So, yeah, he's kicked out of an ambulance, and he's hanging on to a gurney and, like, a cloth on a gurney going down, like, the fucking... The high, whatever highway Whatever... I-95. Sure. Yeah, he's over, like, the George Washington Bridge or something. Like, whatever and he's, it is. he's on this gurney going down. It's not important. Yeah, it's very important. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, someone next to him throws a cigarette out of the car. He catches it in midair, <laughs> <laughs> takes a drag from the cigarette, and then goes... In the most ridiculous, <laughs> non-casual way. Ew! Menthols! And then chucks it. <laughs> and then chucks it away. Yes. That's when I went from, yeah, I can, I can get behind this movie, too. All right. Uh, all right. Well, it's... it's and then, and then all of a sudden, oh, what have I done? <laughs> what have I done? Which is funny, because this is the scene where I, when I went from, this movie isn't too bad. I can kind of get behind it, too. This is the greatest movie ever! Oh, my God! So yeah, he's being pulled by a told, uh, uh, excuse me, by a uh, a sheet on the thing, and then I I forget how exactly, but he gets away from the ambulance, and they come up to a toll booth, and he goes exact change, ah, ah, and pulls in his pocket and goes, ah, chucks the exact change, and he goes yeah, and then and starts driving the gurney away, like changing lanes and speeding up, and look, New York City traffic, man. <laughs> yeah, All right, you gotta avoid. Of course, it. man. Casual 91 commentary about New York City. Listen, if this movie was shot now, that scene wouldn't have happened. Easy pass. Yeah. He, okay. Actually, no. He would have had an easy pass on the gurney. Yes. <laughs> it would have, because it would have been realistic, so he would have been going, oh no, toll! He calls up like his aunt and goes, can I borrow your easy pass real quick? Ugh. That's what you get. So... He drives through the t- he goes through the toll booth. The ambulance go. I don't know. I don't know what happens. Loses control. Hits a ramp. Ah! Flips. <laughs> explodes. Blows up. They're oh, gone. So you're saying the Mario brothers are dead? Yeah, the Mario brothers are indeed dead. I don't remember their names, but then he kind of uh, slowly Mario, goes by. Mario and Luigi. <laughs> no, it's we already did that. We did that. We did the Mario brothers one. <laughs> He slowly goes by on a gurney, and he's like, Oh, hey, Tony, Luigi, Mara, are you guys okay? Oh. Like, <laughs> like he's, for some reason, he's, I forgot about that. Yeah, he's like, oh, you guys okay? Slowly just drifts away into the distance where he meets the candy bar gang, who each punch him hello. <laughs> and then they meet the CIA handler, George, and he calls them all stupid, and he goes, Remember me? It's the guy who set you up all those years ago and put you in prison. And he's like, Arr. That was a really weird scene because it was almost as if that was supposed to be a joke. But yeah. he was like, well, I won't be upset if you won't recognize me because I had a different, I had different hair yeah, and no, different he facial like, hair you and a different nose. Yeah, you wouldn't recognize me because I used to have, I was a bald man with a mustache who had different eyes and no nose. <laughs> yeah, and it's just <laughs> it's like, like, uh, it's like okay. all right. I, that may have been some sort of very obscure reference to something James Colburn's done. It might have been. It might. It could have been a reference to like a cartoon or to an old movie. Like there's there's, there's something in, there in in uh, when they go to the bar way way early when he first gets to the bar, he pulls out the menu and he goes what, reindeer goat cheese. Oh, what is that? That's a reference to some to the the exact same thing reindeer goat cheese that he says in like the last Boy Scout. So, like, there's a lot of that. Like, Bruce Willis wrote the story idea 
then had other people, like famous people, like uh, Stephen D'Souza and like Daniel Waters, something like that. People who have wrote like Heather's, Heather's and yeah. like Die Hard yeah, and stuff like two. that. Yeah, he got them. They were, he was like, well, I'm bring you guys in and actually make this a script mm-hmm. that we can follow. Yeah. And then after he, after they did that, then he's Bruce fucking Willis. So many times he he wants something, he goes, "I'm Bruce Willis. Give me what I want, or I'll quit this film." So he just wrote like ad libbed everything in the middle of filming. So like this movie. It's a thousand percent written by him. Yeah, this is his only uh, writing credit on IMDb. And he doesn't, like, I guess he doesn't get how a story works. So, like, anytime you're like, this is weird, it's because he probably just went, I'm going to ad-lib this. I'm going to change. How about, what if, what if we all just wore hats for this scene? Like, he'll just put it in and now we're all wearing hats. Oh, my God. So, yeah, we're at the CIA, guys. Uh, George, the CIA guy, he offers Hudson Hawk a job. And he's like, I don't want to do it. So he punches him, unconscious, and then Alma Joy pumps Hudson Hawk full of drugs. They lock him in a box. He wakes up in an empty apartment in Italy somewhere else. That British butler from earlier, he greets him again. He's like, oh, let's go into this limo. Uh, we, it's, uh, whatever, Mayflower. Richard Grant. What's his name, Mayflower? Yeah, Richard E. Grant. Oh, yeah, Darwin. Darwin, Darwin Mayflower. Mayflower. I don't remember that name at all. The male Mayflower. He's like, oh, it's me, the villain. I hired the Mario Brothers to find a cat burglar. That's why you had to do that. They all work for me. I'm the villain. Now, two literally things. Literally, he says that. Yeah, he literally, <laughs> he literally says, says, like, says those words. Yeah. By the way, in case you didn't know yeah. who I was, I'm the villain in this tale. So so weird. He gets a fax, takes it, reads it, immediately shreds it, shoots out of like a, <laughs> yes! a tailpipe of the car. What was that? I don't know. It what was... is the exaust system on that vehicle? <laughs> What is, the, what is the miles per gallon? I can't even imagine. Well, the two things that strike me. Yes. One is, you're talking about that British butler. Where you first see him, he has these hidden freaking arm blades, which are awesome. Yeah. And he's instantly like the most lethal, like, all right, this is this is a force we reckon with. And then instantly is like a punchline who gets like smacked around by Darwin Mayflower. And then he's just gone for like the 80%. That, like when he gets slapped around by Richard E. Grant... Mm-hmm. Ad lib, oh that, really? Not in the script. He just, he was like, I'm just gonna slap him, see how it works, and it, <laughs> and it worked. Like this, this whole movie is that apparently Bruce Willis is like, when you're if you're in a, even though Bruce Willis is just another actor with you, he goes, hey, listen, this is my film. I want you to act over the top. So he encourages his co-stars to act over um, the top just, in his film. Just chew that scenery. Yeah, he it doesn't is, like it's. It is shredded. I'll admit it's fun, but the other thing is the candy bar gang. Uh, they they each have their own unique personalities, I guess you could say. But you, you could say that I, would may not be right. But. So so Almond Joy just poisons people in various different ways. I don't get how that relates to Almond Joy, but yes. And uh, Kit Kat, how would you even explain he he's he attempts to be a doppelganger, but it's always off a little bit. Like it's pretty obvious he's not the doppelganger he should be. Yeah, and then. But they don't explain – again, none of their personalities are ever explained as to why they're doing this. Like, it's like, oh, this is their specialty. But it's never explained as to why or what their purpose the is. The only people that really make sense is Butterfinger, who is clumsy as shit. And gigantic And oaf. Snickers, who actually kind of snickers a couple times. Yeah. That's – That makes sense. And I, I want to point out that he snickers – a couple of times. <laughs> not It's not all the time. He's not like Snidely Whiplash's dog. It's not the only line he has. It's just like three times throughout the film. Kit Kat has these little hand, like these little notes that are oh business cards, business cards that like with responses on with them. responses yeah. that are. I actually like that bit, but nothing's done with it <laughs> at all. No, I don't know what the. Po- I didn't get that far. I guess in the story of like all the the directors and like all the special like information, but apparently in the story it was supposed to be that his tongue was cut off. And that's why he has to speak that way, uh-huh. which explains that. But it doesn't explain what they were going to do with it or what was going to, what was the point of it. So, yeah, that's that. We are still with the Mayflowers. Mm. We go into their evil lair area. Like, oh, this is their castle, if you will. And what are they talking about? World domination. Uh, the yeah, the laziest premies ever. Of course, world domination. Uh, so Haw- Hudson Hawk has to help them. Otherwise, him and Tommy Five Tone are going to go back to prison. And Fa- Tommy Five Tone is too old. He can't take it. You can't let him go back to prison. 
And just in case, just in case Hudson Hawk was like, you know what? Sorry, I'm still not going to take it. They do. They it worked before. They're going to be like, all right, we're going to cut your balls off. Here's this dog bunny. Yes. <laughs> Who's going to be like, ball ball. Yes, he will ball ball your balls off. However, Bruce Willis took it a little bit differently and really enjoyed his almost blowy from, yes. <laughs> from <laughs> Eddie from Frasier. He was upset, yes. That was the only show he was allowed to watch in prison. Come on, scramble my eggs. <laughs> Give me that tossed salad. Oh, that's a real thing. Whoa, Never mind. Wait, hold that's on. a real thing. Hang on, no, I'm sorry. They're calling again. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, play jazz on my piano. So, when are we going to get around to you, because it's not going to be me, explaining what exactly their plot is for world domination? Oh, you, you get it way, 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 way at the end. Oh, well, they talk about it a little bit, you're right, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll save it, because it's a gem. It's literally. <laughs> All right. It's literally a gem. Um, so, yeah, they pull it out, they go, well, guess what, you know that robbery you did with the horse and the thing? Yeah, well, well... When you were knocking out all the security guards, the CIA set up security cameras to record the whole thing. And the candy bar gang, we had, they gave us the recording. So now we have you performing a robbery, even though everyone admits you didn't steal anything. <laughs> and we're going to blackmail you with that, even though it doesn't matter. Because they had an auction. like everything, It's not stolen! I don't know what they're going to blackmail him with. But apparently he's like, well, I got to do it now. So they rob the Vatican. And they they put a fake horse in the safe? Yeah, they put a fake... They, they opened the safe, put a fake horse in, held just, on, I guess held on to it. <laughs> for safekeeping. Yeah. And then, during all the commotion, when Bruce Willis escaped with the horse, and Danny Aiello escaped with the horse, they put the horse back in the safe. And then, somehow, even though Bruce Willis stole a fake horse, the British guy still managed to break the horse over the head and get the crystal that was inside of it. Yes. I don't understand but, and how not, that works. Not only that, but at the auction Andy McDowell sees that there's something fishy about that horse yes. she knows the fake but I guess because she has to go along with this plan she goes it's genuinely the real thing it's perfect absolutely flawless yeah so which which is what alright yeah, yeah like so I guess she didn't want to make anyone aware that it wasn't the real thing. So she, whatever the plan was, she was in on and with it. And she, the auction had to go as planned. But, the, the, uh, it's just... But if it was real, if that was the real horse, then what was the point of that scene where she's like, huh, uh, um, it's, it's perfect. It's, because clearly the whole thing was that that wasn't real, which backs up. Yeah. The... And if it wasn't, it, it if... <laughs> If it wasn't real... Bear, it, bear with us. If it was a fake horse that they were auctioning off, why did the bad guys who wanted the horse have to fake... Like, why did they have to legitimate... No, because they didn't... I don't know if they even paid. I don't know if they paid. But why did they have to go to the auction and pretend to pay for a fake horse that they already had and broke and, and like... Um... <laughs> like, it's... I... The whole thing makes no sense and these are the answers they're giving us they're giving us these answers and they don't make sense it's not like we don't have it's not like it's kept vague and we have to kind of decipher it on our no, own no. they tell us conflicting things yes seconds apart that make no sense whatsoever somehow like they cover their bases is it a fake horse yes is it a fake horse? No. no, no. Well, if it's not a fake horse, then we have to buy it. But if it is a fake horse, we already have it. So either way, we have it. Let's move on now. The CIA may or may not be working with the Vatican or double crossing or triple crossing them. <laughs> I don't. And then this, but they all know each other, even though the CIA. But everyone knows who these CIA people are, and they may be working with the villains who know who these CIA people are. And then, and then. And then, <laughs> it's just, oh my god. So yeah, they rob the Vatican. 
<laughs> That's the most matter of fact statement, but it's so accurate. And then they wrap the Vatican. <laughs> they anyway, to, they had to just wrap the Vatican. Okay. So Hudson Hawk goes to the Vatican. He has these two twin escorts that are following him around, but he keeps trying to lose them, running really quick and dodging them back and forth, whatever. Eventually, he runs into Dr. Anna, giving a tour. Uh, there's this annoying American girl there in the in the Vatican. Stupid and he, American. Yeah. <laughs> she's just, she has this stuffed elephant that she's just, just banging it against, like, the stair rails. And I don't know if you catch this, but the mom runs up and she goes, stop it, honey. You're, You're embarrassing your country. Yes. <laughs> I love that part. I was like, oh, good. You're embarrassing your country. <laughs> she's trying, all right? Maybe she's got another kid somewhere that she can't, you know? She's trying. So, yeah, uh, the, it's the it's an, it's an annoying kid. So Bruce Willis takes the stuffed elephant and throws it at the display that he plans on stealing from. Alarms go off. A giant cage drops around it. Poisonous smoke is released in <laughs> yeah, the what? air. Because everyone's like, <laughs> we got to get out of here. <laughs> uh... Dr. Ann takes Hawk down a secret passage, and he, she's like, why are you here? What are you, like, what's going on? And they, he just kind of, like, dances around it, and eventually they set up a date for later on tonight, and uh, then you notice the, the twins eventually find them in the Vatican's, like, super-guarded, secret, underground, postal service tunnel. I don't know how those twins casually wandered down in there, but they pulled that shit off. Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I'm glad I wasn't hallucinating then. No. So. No. This is just an everyday occurrence. Yeah. Anne and Hudson Hawk set up a date for later, and Anne talks to a light up cross. Oh, yeah. And then, first, just in, ca- just in case you're still with it, and this is at least semi-realistic, and even if, like, somehow they cut out, like, all the other batshit crazy shit that happened yeah. in the past 20 minutes... And, or maybe you just went to the bathroom and you missed, because this movie is very fast. So let's say you yeah. missed, you watched the first 20 minutes, and you're like, okay, it's a funny heist caper movie, and then you just missed the last 20 minutes, and so it's you've seen no batshit weird shit. Um, all of a sudden, there's just light-up crosses, mm-hmm. and then everything's played with like this Austin Powers spy caper. Yeah! Yeah! I'm like, what? What's what? What's going on? Yeah, and they, it's not even like tongue in cheek. They take it super seriously. Where like Anne runs up and talks to like her cardinal handler, because <laughs> it's like the CIA. It's like the Vatican CIA. It's like yeah. the Vatican FBI. It's or like whatever. the Vatican is this super spy agency of yeah. like priests and because technically they are. If well, I mean, we'll get to it. But you know, Anne isn't actually a doctor of fucking priceless art yeah and so all these people who are priests and cardinals and nuns and this and that are spies that are just working with or without the government yeah i don't whatever so but she tells the cardinal all about the the things that she's pretty sure hudson hawk's gonna do i'm pretty sure he's gonna steal a codex he might work for these people blah blah and he's like just remember hudson hawk is evil did they talk about at all what the codex is or anything no they never explain what it is or what it does or why they need it they just, just say that it's, the it's codex. a thing that needs to be gotten you know we're just supposed to it's supposed to be like a universal understanding yeah the da vinci yeah. mona lisa flying machine codex, codex yeah so we go to a payphone in the middle of like just a town square and hudson like <laughs> It is so dead center in the middle of a town square. I go, that's the fakest payphone I've ever seen in my life. Like it's, <laughs> it's so clearly a fake payphone. <laughs> it's just, it's terrible. So Hudson Hawk makes a call to Tommy Two Tone, or excuse me, Tommy Five Tone <laughs> in America. Who is Tommy Two Tone? That's a, like there is a Tommy Two Tone. <laughs> that's I the don't... leader of the band, the Two Tones, right? Like <laughs> whatever. So he tries to make a call to Tommy Five Tone. He doesn't notice that Tommy Five Tone is like a couple yards behind him getting into the Mayflower's limo. And so he the, the, obviously Tommy doesn't pick up the phone. Uh, Hawk hangs up, turns around, gets punched in the face by Butterfingers because that's how that gang says hello. Yeah. Uh, they have a fight, like a, like a brief like four-punch fight. 
Butterfinger gets knocked out, but then the rest of the candy bar gang kind of like surround him slowly and they go, ah, oh, they're all dressed casually so they don't they're not really notice. George reminisces about Italy in a way that makes me think like it was very sexual to him. Like, yeah, it was really creepy. I guess it was because then at the end of it, he goes like, I laid every night too. So, <laughs> yeah. At one point, I don't remember which part, which of the candy bar gang did this sure. but he was dressed as like a butler with That's like a Snickers yeah with Snickers and then he, for no reason just throws over the the wine glass that he's holding yeah and then like it sticks to his hand did you see that yeah oh you didn't notice that oh that was oh no he has the like the butler's uh the the serving platter yeah. and and the napkin over his hand and the wine glass but it's just it's a part of his hand, right? No, he turns it, and he's got a gun underneath it, and oh, all that shit's attached to the gun, so, I like, I was that. like, oh, that's fun, like, he, you, he was like, I, to be like, I got you, like, I got you, yeah, like, you right. thought you had us? No, I got a gun he's, the whole there's, time, there's I got you. slick, other than yeah. Butterfinger, who literally seems like a giant man, who, uh, who... He's just, yeah, he's a dummy, apparently this was the first time he'd ever act in his life, he was, and literally he just walked like in. He football player, I don't know... I have to look up any He may more. be a football player. He, 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 you know who this guy is. He played Zangief in the Street Fighter film. He played Chip in uh, Batman Returns. He is the new Leatherface in the new, all the new movies. Or what about still. I don't know if they rebooted it a third time or a fifth time or whatever it is. He was Zangief? But that's, yeah, he's Zangief, yeah. What? You yeah. got paid? Yeah, yeah. He's Chip, Chip, uh, Shrek, Chip Shrek, Max Shrek's son. Wow! Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah! And oh, Batman man. Returns, yeah. Good for wow. This was the first time. Apparently, he did. There ever are a acted. lot of a lot of his movies are gonna be <laughs> are gonna be on this podcast. Uh, probably. Yeah. Have you done Street Fighter yet? Yeah, we did that one. God damn yeah. you! Yeah. He came in late, son. I'm yeah, sorry. It happens. Sorry, sorry, everybody. <laughs> yeah, cast and crew. Sorry, <laughs> everybody in the background. You don't hear. Sorry, Raul Julia. I was really hoping to comment on your film. 23 years oh, after you died. Oh, yeah, we brought him back to life. He's he's a grip. He's a grip on our podcast. It now. levitates his casket <laughs> from, from the ground. And it levitates this microphone! <laughs> <laughs> I gotta admit, he's, he's a little over the top, but he's the best damn grip I've ever had in my life. <laughs> There's no fucking denying that. <laughs> Oh, I mean, literally fuck. over the top. He holds the mic too high sometimes. Kill that joke right One too far. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, had to bring it back home. Let's go back. Hey, remember we're doing some serious shit here. This is, this is serious work. We're at the Vatican, folks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, are we? Do so, you think they actually shelled out to be in the Vatican? Fuck no. Oh, was that, fuck Was that some no. cardboard cutouts? And... <laughs> you should pay them a dollar for thinking that. That's how much money they saved not shooting there. So Bruce Willis gets mailed to the Vatican. Mail hit. And inside he uses tools to set up an elaborate case opening device, like with glass and glue and rulers and shit like that. Like it's super, super elaborate. Um, as I had to point this out, he does all that as guards pour spaghetti from their <laughs> thermos. Like I, I know how thermoses work. I know you can keep both liquids and solids in a therm. You can do whatever you want with a thermos, but seeing someone pour spaghetti and like meat sauce out of a thermos, I went, "Oh my god, that's horrible!" Like, why would you? As an Italian, I was deeply. Afraid that was by that's that an that affront of God and man and and meat and, and ball. meat and yeah. I don't even think he had meatballs, but it was still an affront to them. So, while I'm still being horrified by that happening, Hudson Hawk takes a book. He takes, excuse me, the book and traps a guard and escapes all in one, like, rope pull. Just, like, goes out, no problem. He's good, folks, all right? He's good. He's, yeah, the best cat burglar in the world. Uh, He swings from a tree, zip lines down a rope, lands on a light post onto the top of a bus, onto some chickens. He landed right on chickens. I don't even know it was that. Live chickens. It was horrifying. Then he falls off the bus into a seat that happens to be his date with Anna. (laughs) Like, ta-da, here we are. There's no chicken feathers on me. Just in case you did go to the bathroom the first time this happened. <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen <laughs> again, I'm yeah, pretty sure. Oh, yeah. uh, so, yeah, he's on a date with Hannah, date like, all nights. of a sudden. The candy bar gang watches from another table. <laughs> really inconspicuous, too. 
couldn't even notice them at all. They they can't be inconspicuous people. Like it's not. <laughs> You could put sunglasses on them. You go, why are those guys welding? Like, it's, <laughs> <laughs> like it doesn't, you still stick out. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, picture it. <laughs> so, uh, Hudson Hawk accidentally reveals that he was in prison, and Anna's like, oh, that turns me on. Let's go back to my apartment. Mm-hmm. Well, she doesn't say let's go back. They just smash cut two back to the apartment. Yeah. And Hawk's got his shirt off, and Anna's like, what's this, what's this dove tattoo you have? Because it's clearly not like a fucking hawk. Like, it's, it's like a turtle dove or, like, a pigeon or something like that. Like, it's so small. And he's like, it's about, it's for my name, you know, it's about the Hudson Hawk. And apparently Bruce Willis really got to explain what a Hudson Hawk was. Yes, he did. To everybody. No, I mean, like, really, he wrote it in the script. He's like, I'm going to explain this. <laughs> this is my explanation now. Uh, he explains that it's a combination of hawks and, oh, excuse me, the hawk is the name of a sharp wind that blows in mm-hmm. from a, and it's on, on the Hudson, because I'm by the Hudson, Jersey, Hudson, Hudson Hawk, that's me, that's, I'm Hudson Hawk. And they're like, <laughs> oh my god, that's hot, let's kiss. So they go to kiss, but she runs away, because she's like, it's been too long, I can't kiss, I don't know if I can do it. And then the Jesus alarm goes off, wah, wah, or excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> And uh, she's like, oh my god, the alarm. She knocks over his bag. The codex falls out. She's like, oh, what's this? Oh, and he's like, it's not what you think. Ha ha. And he explains. Actually, it is. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's exactly what you think. Yeah. He explains that, you know, I don't really know what's going on. I'm working for them because they make me work for them. But, I, you know, I'm just doing what they tell me. The, the best and the worst part of his movie. Oh, yes. Well, which can is. I, can I please? Oh, go for it. Yeah, go I ahead. Yeah, I'm you, haven't, sorry. you haven't said much. Go ahead. Uh, I'm, uh, all there right. Been many comments. There are movies that would come out and you'd see them on basic cable or whatever, and then they wouldn't be shown in the future and you wonder why. <laughs> Escape from New York, my all-time favorite movie, came yeah. out in 1981. It's not shown on TV anymore, at least I can't imagine it is. Why? Because the World Trade Center is heavily a factor in that movie. Mm. Uh, a brief aside, he has to go into Manhattan, so he goes on this little tiny plane <laughs> and lands right on the fucking roof of no the World Trade Center. No way will that ever be shown on television Never be again shown again. In America, no. I think about this movie and this v- next fucking line and possibly a reason... I mean, I guess you could cut out this part. Yeah, it's not necessary at all. It's so unnecessary that... How is it in the movie? Like, it, it's not a joke. It's it's a literally, it's a matter-of-fact line. So, Butterfinger, the, like, seven-foot-tall... Sure. Not even a, like, man-child, who is basically yeah. Lenny from fucking... Yeah. Right? And he basically just says, want me to rape him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's not even like, like, if we told you the context, you'd go, oh, that makes sense. No, because no, no they're outside of the car, or excuse me, outside of the apartment in a car waiting. They're like, there should be noise happening by now. There should be some sort of commotion. Yeah. Silence happens. <laughs> yes, yes, silence. The calm before the storm. And then and the rape. Butterfinger thinks out loud the thought, want me to rape him? With just... <laughs> Like, that would solve something anywhere, anyhow. What was even their reaction? Because I was so blown away that I was just... They, I, I was it, gone for a minute. It further proves that Butterfinger is stupid, because they both just... They're like... Just read your book, Butterfinger. <laughs> and he pulls out a book, and he goes, I would not eat them in a boat. I would not... And they go, to yourself, Butterfinger. <laughs> Stop raping people. <laughs> God, we're running out of books. I would not rape them <laughs> in a boat. I would not rape them near a moat. I would rape them with green eggs and ham. <laughs> I would I would not rape a lady named Pam. But I but I would though. Damn it, Butterfinger. <laughs> no! Buy him another book. He broke the book. He tried to turn the page and it just ripped apart. Oh my god. From the spine. And he ripped up the spine. <laughs> <laughs> then he ate the spine. <laughs> it's not food, Butterfingers. So, back upstairs, Hawk has no idea uh, what's going on, and this shocks Anna. Oh, so yeah, about like the whole thing. about He doesn't know what's going on with the, the whole Mayflower stealing thing. And this is Anna's like, what? So, uh, he drinks his cappuccino, 
but it's filled with some drug. I forget the drug, what it's called. Epic Plura something uh, yeah. like that. And he gets, Hudson Hawk knocks out. The candy bar gang breaks in, and Anna is not shocked at all. She's like, I want to see George Kaplan, you know, and then, like, the leader of the CIA gang. So they go to him. Uh, he explains that it's a classic CIA move, that they're going to take the Codex and sell it back to the Mayflowers and then arrest them once they try to buy it for dealing in stolen goods and everything will be fine. Makes perfect sense. It, it actually kind of does, but it's just she, CIA fucking tactics. Uh, so she leaves, and then they reveal, like, how come you didn't let me kill her? They're like, well, we need her alive. She's the only one that has tabs on the Vatican group, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but as she's leaving, Anne, or Anna, excuse me, notices the Mayflower's limo, and they're like, oh, that's their limo, oh. So we go to a church so Anna can confess what she knows about Hudson Hawk and the Mayflowers and and she tells the Cardinal, oh, we, we're, I think we're being double-crossed. Hudson Hawk's also being double-crossed. He doesn't know what he's doing or why he's doing it. A lot of double-crosses. Like yeah. I'm pretty sure they're just an innocent man. Uh, yeah, there are. There are a lot of double-crosses later on. Uh, we go to the Mayflowers. And Hawk, Hudson Hawk, is brought to the Mayflowers. They cut open the codex, take out the crystal. Uh, the two twins that were supposed to follow Hudson Hawk, like, four scenes earlier, show up. They get shot for failing. Uh, the Mayflowers are like, take Hawk away, but don't hurt him. Hudson Hawk's like, oh yeah, don't hurt me? What if I start punching people in the face? <laughs> and he starts kicking the shit out of people until they threaten to cut his balls off again. And he goes, oh, oh, and then he, then he oh right, that's a yeah. thing you can still do. Yeah, yeah. Later on, they explain that they're going to use the machine to flood the gold market and crash the world economy. Okay. And that Hudson Hawk has to go and steal this flying machine prototype thing. And he's like, no, I'm just not, I won't do it. I won't do it. And they're like, send me to jail. Like, no, we're not going to send you to jail. We're going to kill you. Like, this is beyond jail. We're just going to murder you now if you don't do it. And he's like, all right, fine, murder me. And they're like, well, okay. And they put a blindfold on him and untie him and leave. And when he gets undressed, or excuse me, when he un- gets untied up, he it turns out Tommy Five Tones there, and he explains about how oh, I got this deal, and it seemed like a good deal. It seemed like you'd be want to be part of it. So you know, this is just the way it is now, and there's only one way out of this. And he pulls out a gun, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, no!" Uh, one thing I want to point out, which is just something that makes me feel me feel good, because that's how old I am now, which is Danny Aiello started acting in his thirties. Really? Yeah. So you know, never give up on your dreams. I mean, <laughs> fan. Pretty, pretty damn good. Yeah, well, you know, fucking, yeah. Professional, multiple, uh, multiple mob movies. He's got, like, uh, you know, a couple of pairs of shoes. It's good. All right, well, now we're... He's a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> so outside, the Mayflowers worry if it's a good idea to leave them alone. They're like, don't worry, they're just going to talk about old times and buddy-buddy. And they come crashing out of the window, wrestling for a gun, falling out of the balcony, oh rolling downstairs... And somebody gets shot. <laughs> oh, no! No, Tony! No! And oh, Tommy. Sorry, I said Tony. <laughs> yeah, whatever. It's all He plays a lot of Tony. He plays it's a lot fun. of Tony. Yeah, That's it's true. Fine. It's fine. Uh, an ambulance shows up and real takes away. Yeah, real quick, it shows real, up. Yeah. <laughs> takes him away. Takes, arrests him. Take him away. And the Mayflowers are like, oh, plan B, I guess. <laughs> we go to some ruins and Anne waits for the truck to show up because uh, when the ambulance drove away, it drove into the back of a truck. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then the truck pulls up and t- uh, style. Hudson Hawk and Tommy get out and they're arguing and go, well, oh, you did this, why'd you do that? Blah, 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 you got me out here, blah, blah, And everyone apologizes and say they lo- that they love him. Aww. Aww. And then another imp- improvised line by Bruce Willis, which is, this is when they're by the ruins and he goes, hey, how come they just leave all this stuff lying around? Oh, my God. And they go, it's called Ruins. 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 Good name. That's a good name. <laughs> that whole thing was improvised by Bruce Willis. What? Get out of town. Yeah. They came up with that gem on the fly. You can tell that Bruce Willis leaves Jersey all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah, we go back to Anna's apartment, and everybody's drinking and laughing and having a good time. And Three-way. Anna's, not yet. Oh, yeah. Anna says that, oh, I saw that the candy bar gang, they left on a plane, so they definitely bought it. They're gone. Now we have to worry about them. And, uh, oh, oh, everyone's so tired. Time to go to bed. Let's go to bed. All right, good night, everybody. I'm going to sleep with you, Anna. She's like, no, no, no. You have to sleep on the couch. Good night. 
And Tommy's like, hee 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 hee, yeah, it's a romantic night. <laughs> Those two friends. Best friends. Best friends making fun of each other. You ain't get laid and I didn't other. <laughs> <laughs> if I only had a pig. <laughs> if only I could rhyme. So in the daytime, uh, the candy bar gang wake up Hudson Hawk and Tommy and AJ, I'm um, Joy, paralyzes them. <laughs> That's what they call her. That's the only reason they call her I, AJ. I know, it just upsets it's, me. Yeah, I know. I didn't <laughs> like it either. It was so... I was, uh, like, I was... I think I was more upset that at no time did they call Kit Kat KK. <laughs> so, the... The CIA, George Kaplan, he reveals that they stole the machine already and they have the third crystal and that they don't need Hudson Hawk and I don't know why they're here, but they're here for some reason and in walks Anne and she's like, she's got a gun, but they're like, you're not going to shoot, Pachoo! paralyze her as well. They take her and leave. Uh, Almond Joy and Snickers stay behind to set up bombs, but uh, Tommy gets, like, free of the paralyzation a little quick and trips them up and they make them get bombed and they blow up and then and the good guys escape. What's what's weird to me, I completely forgot, um, one member of the gang, uh, Snickers, who yes. has the bomb, um, he was in another movie uh, a few oh. years before this Okay, that's one of my favorite books, war movies and it was about the Vietnam War and it was called Casualties of War with Michael J. Fox. Yeah. And it's as dead serious a movie as possible. And this dude who plays Snickers in this movie was a murdering rapist in that movie. Oh! And was as, like, evil a character as you can possibly imagine. So it's funny that in, like, five years' time, or probably even less, like, three years' time, between those two movies, just a very different character. Yeah. That's messed up. (laughs) That's, uh... Yeah, that's pretty jarring, I'd say. To say the least. So, uh, we go to the Mayflowers, into their castle, and Anna is loopy from the Karari darts that knocked her out, so she's just like, oh, the cheese is too hot, and battles oh, don't man. roll down a monkey, and I go, whatever, I don't know what she's saying. Uh, outside, the good guys, they're sneaking around, trying to sneak into the castle. Inside, the villains are literally shaking pieces of the crystal in front of <laughs> Anne's face, just trying to get her to snap out of it. Uh, outside, Tommy is carrying a golf bag, and he outs- he pulls a rocket launcher, or I think a grenade launcher out of it. And it's just so weird to me that they have the ability to strategically calculate the necessary time to perform an elaborate plan, but then also have the time to perform a, mu- a music video with dancing and singing and showboating, and it's all like it's all within the time frame that they need. Like, how long is it going to take us to get upstairs? Uh, like, two minutes? Yeah, but what if we're singing and dancing while we do it? Oh, like, 3.40. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, good. That means we can sing, you know. Make sure, you, Tommy, you got to cut your sachet at the end by like, four seconds. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be tight. All right, all right. We're pressed for time. They're professionals. Every sachet goes too long at the end. Like, they all get caught because of the big finish they do. I've been there. All right. Who uh, yeah, well, I know, but I'm saying. We got to, you know, it's, we got to learn from the mistakes here. Let's move on. I mean, you're calling it a mistake. I got a great sachet. I want the world to see. <laughs> you want me to cut my sachet short? I'm just saying. It's not good. It's you not cut good. it. It's not the sachet I made. You gotta. <laughs> you, gotta you gotta. You gotta dance with what brought you. And in this case, it's a sachet. It's a sachet. Stop saying sachet. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, sachet away. <laughs> right, so, the remaining candy bar gang. Who I think is just Kit Kat and Butterfingers now. Wait a minute. No, fuck you. Fuck you, dude. What? Fuck you. What? You're going to gloss over the dolphin noises? You're going to fucking... No. Fucking suck, uh, suck my ass. You're going to... Suck get, my ass. Yeah. All you're gonna, right. You're going to gloss over the dolphin noises. Explain to these fine people what happened. Um, <laughs> the dolphin noises. Please. I don't remember exactly how it comes apart, but, you know, it's just the, the, the Mayflower and, and Kaplan are like, Come on, Anna. Hey. Let's go. Uh, put the crystals together. Come on. Put the and she just goes. Oh, Anna's not here. He went short. 
on the noises, oh, by yeah, the way. Yeah. She goes longer, yeah. And then it stops, and then there's like a brief scene outside, and then it comes back inside, and they're like, they say something, more lines are said, <laughs> and then she kind of like looks, and it goes, ee, ee, <laughs> for like another, <laughs> it's like, what? I'm sorry. This is a very jarring film. Like, it cuts between serious and comedy and, and just hardcore cartoonery. Very true. So, like, to give you another instance, the remaining candy bar gang hear the explosions from the grenade launcher and go, we're going to go check it out. You, Kit Kat, stay here and guard them dressed as a statue because he's dressed as, like, a like a Mercury, you know, like the Roman yeah. Mercury statue. He's got a... Cr- and then... The Mayflowers go, you're going to watch us? Yeah? Well, we're going to double cross you, pull out a double crossbow, Ugh. shoot him, and double cross him with a double crossbow. Ugh. Like, full, like, hardcore slapstick. The duo are singing a song. Oh, well, I forget what they're singing. Right? Would you like to? So they sing other songs, but it's, <laughs> would you like to swing? Oh, the stars the only thing they sing in my head. Explosions are going off. Uh... The Butterfinger and and Kaplan, they loop back around and they double cross Butterfinger. He's dead. Hudson Hawk shows up. So Ka- Kaplan and Hudson Hawk, what? I'm sorry. I just, I had completely forgot about what happened to Butterfinger until you just said it. And then I just played that short scene in my head where he's dead, but yeah. he's still standing. And he goes, I don't know about this person. I think she's going to double cross us. Yeah. <laughs> like, like with like a giant knife or something yes. in his back. I love... This, like, this whole thing is Butterfinger's best pit thing that happens, because before that, Kaplan goes, I want you to go, te- I want you to go debrief Mayflower on the situation, and Butterfinger goes, okay, okay, and he runs, and he goes, yeah, I got it, and runs away, and then he opens the door, like, closes it by turning around to face the door, then turns around in one fell swoop towards Mayflower. Cuckoo! Oh, gets shot by two crossbows. Cuckoo! Gets shot by two crossbows again. <coughs> Coughs up blood. Exits the door. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Turns around and, like, you know, looks at the door as he closes it. Okay, then turns around and says, I don't know about them, coach. <laughs> Think they might have double-crossed us. <coughs> and dies. <laughs> One take, folks. Yeah. He got that down in one it was, take. It was beautiful. And then Hudson Hawk just randomly appears behind George Kaplan and goes, oh, I guess he died or whatever. He, <laughs> yeah. he says something, made some weird Yeah, he plays. got a sad card after this one. Uh, so, yeah. We jump back to uh, Anna, and Anna snaps out of it because Lady Mayflower calls God a loser. Oof. Oh, that was fighting words. Kicks her in the head, unties herself. Uh, George Kaplan's doing Kung Fu to Hudson Hawk on the roof. Oh. I mean, you you can make a case that there's, like, at least 12 scenes in this movie that, like, are so bad that it will upset you. This. But this is the one where, like, I, I forgave the others because I was like, all right, it's goofy. But yeah. this one was too much. It just really... Just piss me off. The movie tried to defend itself because during like the trivia track scene, when this thing happened, it was like, oh, just so you know, uh, what's his name? James Corbin? James Colburn, J- yeah. James Colburn. Like, just so you know, James Colburn used to train with Bruce Lee, and that's why this is okay. It's true, he did. James Colburn was like John Wayne, but like, you know, a little bit more slick looking like not as annoying he's in fucking you know fucking great escape fucking yeah uh, it, it's fucking james colburn and then to see him you know doing some weird yeah, as yeah yeah, yeah 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 that was oh man and then and then uh hawk is just like cartooning it up where he like he just keeps uh, 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 yeah, he kept uh, bending uh, forward uh, and then bending backwards and bending forward yeah. And then I think at one point he says, how do I shut this thing off or something like yeah, that? Yeah, because he keeps going back and forth. He can't stop reacting to not getting hit. Uh, but what, before that happens, they're just fighting on the roof. The male Mayflower holds Tommy at gunpoint. Darwin Mayflower, he's got Tommy at, at gunpoint in the limo. And then they wrestle for the gun. The butler gets shot. The car starts to drive. We go back to Hudson Hawk. Hudson Hawk, again, he's being, this is when he's being smacked around and he can't stop being reacted to. And George takes a step back and goes, he and does a flying karate kick, and Hudson, go- Hudson Hawk goes, hey, my hat, and bends down to pick up his hat, and George yeah! flies over him off a roof, yep. down, yep. 
lands on the car that's driving out of control. Safe landings on. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was totally part fine. Of this movie. Totally fine. Uh, Mayflower jumps out of the car, locks uh, Tommy inside. The butler does too. Tommy's locked inside. The butler also shoots a rocket or a bomb or whatever at the. He the got limo. shot, but he's totally cool now. <laughs> yeah, he he's, got, ho- he's holding up a handkerchief. He got handker- shot handker- so chip. hard that he passed out onto the gas, <laughs> but then woke up. And somehow wedged the gas to make sure it keeps driving. Yes. And jumped out. Shot the thing with a, with a, a missile or whatever. The car goes, drives off a cliff while Tommy's in the back. Kaplan's on the roof. It explodes. Everybody's dead, I assume. Uh, the male Mayflower guy, he laughs. Hudson Hawk swings down to him, kicks him over, but then the, not, the butler comes over and knocks him out. Later on... Like, at this point, I'm like, dude, this is the longest cartoon I've ever watched in my <laughs> life. Like, it, it never fucking stops. The Mayflowers have apparently spent all night trying to put the crystal together, but just can't do it, and they need Hudson Hawk to do it. I'm like, why can't you just hire a bunch of grandmas or, like, autistic kids to put this shit together? Like, it's a puzzle. Like, it's, it can't be that hard. My question is, they, they're trying to put this puzzle of Da Vinci's thing together. Yeah. How would a how would Hudson Hawk know how to put it together? He steals things. He doesn't do puzzles. He's he for two seconds a piece. Like, yeah, I think he technically didn't even have his hands on all three because, like, I think like the flying machine one, they cut it open in front of him while yeah, he's tied he did, up. Yeah, so didn't he it. has no idea how. And and no human being who's alive has seen it put together. Yeah. So how would anyone know how to do it? I don't... He's a master cat burglar, not a master puzzler. Like and a, even if, like, everyone who studied Da Vinci... Like, Da Vinci had explicit, you know, notes on how to put it together, how, wouldn't all the engineers who were helping rebuild the machine, wouldn't they... Because obviously they're reading those notes to somehow know how to build that, rebuild that gold machine. Yeah. Wouldn't they know how to I, put this I, together? I, it, oh, Nothing about this makes any sense. Why am I asking questions? Nothing about this makes any sense. What am I doing? Uh, it's the worst part about it is it's not real. Like the transmutation, it's not real. So you can make up anything you want about it, and they still couldn't. Like they couldn't come up with a continuable idea. At one point, like they talk about alchemy, and they're like, "Oh yeah, alchemy," as though they know exactly what's going on. Yeah. Like, no, but uh, whatever. Look, so, anyway, (laughs) we're so close to the end. We're so close. I'm so sorry. Uh, Of course, he does. Hudson Hawk puts the fucking crystal together, no problem. He's good. He's, yeah. And they turn the machine on. But guess what? You know how the whole movie, they had these three pieces that they had to put together? Yeah. Yeah, well, he did that and somehow left a tiny fragment piece off of it. Because there's four pieces, I guess. I don't know. He he asked uh, her, Andy McDowell, yeah. says, what would happen if I didn't put all the pieces together? How would she ever know? Ever? They just <laughs> stop giving a fuck at this <laughs> yeah. point. They just don't care. Bad things would happen. That's an yeah, bad definitely things. bad well, things. Well, guess what? <laughs> hey, hey, Hannah. What would happen if I didn't put it together right? What do you mean? Well, I left this one triangle out. Oh, no, now it's a soft serve machine. (laughs) Like, like, what are you, like, how would they know? So, yeah. The machine blows up. Uh. Darwin Mayflower gets half his face burned. I, I don't even know what happens to the lady. I think she just gets electrocuted to death. I don't see her. I have no idea. She just gets blown up. I remember her dying, but I don't... I don't care or remember. I remember seeing Darwin Mayflower's face half burned off, and his eyeball was white. Like, it was... He got burnt to death. Like, it was horrifying. So, he's dead. Bruce... Excuse me, not Bruce. Hudson Hawk (laughs) tries to run away, but the butler (laughs) attacks them, and for some reason, he's got, like, Indian war paint on his face. It made no sense. And he says, how? Yeah! <laughs> like, so it's not even like, oh, it's supposed to be just war paint. It's not Indian war paint. No! He says, how? This, when the, and the trivia tracks in the DVD, this is when it decided to let me know that Bruce Willis encourages his co-actors to go over the top when they act. So that leads me to believe that this was the butler's choice. Like, what if I dress like an Indian? Let's fucking, yeah, okay. throw the butler under sure. the bus. Yeah, fine, why not? <laughs> Look, it's just how it works. You can only blame Hitler so long at the end of the day before you go, 
Hitler had friends. Like, there was people around him going, good one, boss. Like, you gotta blame those guys, too. So now Bruce Willis is Hitler. <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> Xbox. <laughs> Xbox. Xbox. Also the Xbox. <laughs> the, the original Xbox. Xbox. And Bruce Willis. And Bruce Willis. All Hitler. All Hitler. Yes. Right? Nazis were green. <laughs> Xbox is green. Xbox is green. Xbox is green Bruce when Willis he takes too much green. drugs. Bruce Willis, we're assuming now, he likes, that his he favorite likes color, color green. is green. Yeah, well, because of all the money uh, that right? didn't come in from this movie. You ever seen a green horse? Nope. Not in his films. Hates He's scared horses. of him. Yeah. <laughs> Every time, every time he watches Wizard of Oz and he gets to the scene of a horse with a different girl, he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fast forward, fast forward. Okay, all you right. You mean the Wizard of Thief? Wizard of, well, yeah, <laughs> yes. It's his own movie and he hallucinates a, a color-changing horse in the film. We've literally referenced everything that we've said in this in this recording. We're at the end. We've got to wrap it all up. That's Full how it circle, works. Folks. Yeah, yeah. Circle of... No, that's not the song we're singing at the end. That's not. We're not gonna sing that song. <clears throat> Sorry. So, yes, uh, Bruce Willis makes the butler chop his own head off with his <laughs> with his uh, knife hand thingies. Uh, the dog shows up, and Bruce Willis is like, "Go get this one, Anna," and she's like, "Okay." And then she gets eaten by the fucking dog. <laughs> yeah. So he uses a high powered tennis ball launcher to shoot the dog out of a window off a cliff. He's dead. Uh, Hawk and Anna use. The Da Vinci flying machine to escape the exploding castle. They land in a field nearby a cafe. I don't know if you noticed this, but I didn't notice it until they landed. Uh, Anna, she had bite marks on her neck from the dog. Like, oh, really? She had wounds, yeah. Like, they make up wounds on her neck. That's awesome. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's fucking great. I was thinking about how um, they land in Da Vinci's flying machine, which is technically, like, probably... Oh, 500 years old at least, yeah. And so technically it's probably, what, top five most valuable artifacts on Earth? <laughs> leave it in the field with they a bunch of kids. They leave it in the field with a bunch of kids and they're like, all right, let's go get that cappuccino. <laughs> yeah, let's go, yeah. <laughs> they go to a cappuccino place. They, he has one. He's like, Anna, would you play Nintendo with me? She's like, yeah, I guess. I was in a parish. I don't know what Nintendo is either. <laughs> yeah, they- <laughs> <laughs> and they kiss. Uh, all of a sudden... Oh, they're like, hey, man, I really wish, I really wish Tommy Five Tone was here. All of a sudden, he shows up on a donkey, and they're like, what? But you, you fell off a cliff in a fiery mess, and he goes, airbags. Like, what about the fire sprinkler system? <laughs> and they wrap up this film in the best way possible, which is Hudson Hawk goes, yeah, that's probably what happened. <laughs> And then he finally <laughs> yeah, gets finally, his cappuccino. Finally gets the cappuccino. And, oh, that's the climax. Yes. It's so good that someone not only wrote a book about it, but felt the need to illustrate him getting his cappuccino. Because <laughs> the film ends with the narrator again and closing the book going, and he finally got his cappuccino. <laughs> end. The end. Oh, man. I can't. I can't. Like, I. That's why I did the opening skit the way it is. Because I know. That every step of negotiations had to be, Bruce, we're not going to do this. Yeah? Who else are you going to get to play Bruce Willis in this movie? That's what I thought. That's what we're doing. Like, he, he must have burned every bridge to get this shit made. Oh, my God. You're fucking... You're, you people watching this thing are so fucking lucky. <laughs> like, are you watching Hudson Hawk now while listening to this? No, no. you're not. No, you don't are have you to. Are you planning on watching <laughs> Hudson Hawk? No. <laughs> you're fucking welcome. No. All right? No. You know what I did? Watched it three times. <sighs> It's not fucking fun. Why? Why? I, I so desperately wish that Delta could have been here because it was like, this film's gold. This film's great. <laughs> like, I wanted to have you guys just yell at each other, but he's out of state, so we can't, we, we couldn't get him here. You weren't free any other time of day. Yeah. Danny Money was literally only free Friday. Like, I, w- this was the episode that did not want to get made. Like, it was. Yeah, the movie did not want to get made, and yet it did. I, we, I tried to film this with Delta. A week and a half ago, when we we couldn't do it, Ugh. and then I set it up again, couldn't do it. Set it up like I set it up three times with him, we couldn't do it. I almost couldn't get here yeah, today. Yeah, it was yeah. I, like I said, I forgot that I told you we were going to do it today, <laughs> and had to write the script an hour beforehand. Like, yeah, I was talking to you. I was like, I don't know if this is happening. I don't want to. It's the later <laughs> yeah. it gets, the less I'm going to want to do this. Yeah. So I'm just going to be like, what's up? <laughs> like if you if you didn't text me to be like, what's up? It wouldn't have happened. Like it, I wouldn't even have called. So you blame it on me now. Yeah. Oh, 100%. My God. It's totally you. Ugh. Oh, man. So, I got a lot written here, apparently. Could you make a sequel? Well, let me tell you. Yeah. Um, 
Well, a foot, first off, after that, you have written here, would you cash in on the success of this movie? What movie is a success to you? That's how I describe the segment, okay? That's just the non, that's just the nomenclature of what it is. You're, no. It's just, no. You're gonna let me, can, is this editable on my phone? I'm going to need to change this. Uh, have you to can. Delete yeah, this. You're fine. It won't change my version, there though. Mine still says okay. success. Failure of this movie. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, I racked my brain to try and come up with a another story from yeah. this all i had was um hudson hawk is 25 years older because now the movie would be made what 91 so 2016 okay uh he's coming out of retirement tommy five tone is now like a hundred years old and they're still singing <laughs> you, you know danny aiello isn't actually a hundred years old right he, well, like, he's only 50 or 60 he was or something like, 50 like that when that movie came out it's been 25 years so he's probably like 75 he was like 80. 40 in that movie <laughs> fuck you <laughs> bruce willis was like four, all we'll right anyway, anyway, anyway yeah. <laughs> let's go for my half-ass story here yeah. um what's it called in the movie, he says some weird line towards the beginning about how he wanted to be selling spatulas. Do you remember this? Oh, that was what Frank Stallone said, yeah. Yeah. So that's open, exactly what he's doing. Open a hardware store and sell and spatulas. Sell spatulas, which makes no sense because yeah, yeah. they don't sell them in hardware sure. stores. So Hudson Hawk is 25 years older. He's retired. He's selling spatulas. He comes out of retirement to do one last job. Okay. Which is to steal moon rocks from the FBI who's teaming up with insert name of religion here like the jesuits and and fucking hbo and anything else any other group that would never work with these organizations they all work together to quadruple cross each other to somehow fuck your life i hate myself just fucking kill me now (laughs) that's your sequel you give up at the end of the sequel (laughs) <laughs> just to fuck with yourself. I mean, well, if I told you that I was going to fucking write a movie with fucking batshit crazy bullshit triple crosses between a super spy Vatican agency, the CIA, and <laughs> billionaires who, even though they're billionaires, they somehow want to make everyone else less rich, even though they're technically billionaires. And I'm going to throw rape jokes and fucking candy bar references but no, let me let me try and come up with something that can beat that. Fuck you, fuck me, fuck this, fuck down phonics, I'm done. <laughs> okay alright uh, I came up with actually surprisingly a, a pretty similar film which again is basically a direct sequel to the not direct sequel but a, I, I think a direct remake if you will to the film which is I have 10 years later so like 19 or excuse me like 2001 uh, after realizing that the bar life wasn't what it used to be Eddie and Tommy open up an internet cafe and a man convinces Hudson Hawk that being good and going legit doesn't mean they have to stop being who you are. So he hires him to test security for banks by breaking into them and stealing whatever he can before he gets caught and all you know, just test security. Uh, but one day, he steals a religious artifact that's activated by Anna, because she's got the whole God thing going on, and it causes them to go on, like, a quest, and, like, the Vatican's after them, and, like, it's a whole fucking, like, adventure, and, th- and like, what's gonna happen next? That literally sounds like what this movie should have been. Right? I, I tried to figure out a, like, a, a mythological item and be like, what they're after? Like, literally the only thing I could find even close would be they find the Leahona, which is from the Book of Mormon. It's kind of like a compass that works based on your faith to God. Like, if you do something like, if you're like, ah, oh, God doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, that's not his plan. Then it's not going to work as well. Or something like that. Like, if you doubt God, it doesn't go, it doesn't work as well. The whole, the whole, I don't want to shit out a whole religion right now, but the whole Book of Mormon sounds like somebody went, oh, what, really? Look at, oh, oh, God's walking away. Look at him go, guys. <laughs> I think you should wash that, those dishes. You got to wash those dishes. Otherwise, oh, oh, you don't, you don't think we should go this way? Compass isn't working, guys. Compass, stop working. <laughs> Maybe you should believe in God, guys. Oh, my God. That's the whole, so that's what the compass is. Apologies it's, to those who are Mormons. No, not for the me. Mormon community. No, not for me. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. There's there's a one thing that's cool, I guess, about fucking all that shit is there's a ton of religious artifacts out there. Fucking Langelanginus, and you got all kinds of crazy shit. Yeah, yeah. The fucking uh, the cloths and the thing. The swaddling. Cloth. Oh God, the no! Swaddling not the swaddling cloth, cloth my I'm friend. <laughs> I was looking that up and like seeing, trying to find holy stuff, and like <laughs> like, oh, here's the holy nails. I was like, really? That's, 
you really want those to be holy, guys? Like, you sure? Well, his hands were holy. Because <laughs> <laughs> they had holes in them. Yeah, they did. Oh, man. Oh, I also had that because of the whole, I'm working with the internet and it's a new age. So Hudson Hawk can also hack stuff now. Ah. So he's also a hacker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, my movie takes place in 2001, so hacking was like all you had to do was like, I'm a hacker. How? I'm hacking the mainframe. The network's taking a nosedive. Oh, I'm in. The <laughs> Matrix is, is becoming one. <laughs> we need to have you watch the movie Hackers. I have seen that movie. I love it's, that movie. It's the craziest. Don't you see? Isn't it like. 18 year old and it's only titties in that movie yeah yeah there is baby yeah, this is before she was fucking her brother yeah <laughs> that happened that's a real thing uh, yeah okay. I know that was before she carried Billy Bob Thornton's v- blood in a vial around her neck was that before she slept with knives <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's a mother of eight ladies and gentlemen yeah. or twelve yeah <laughs> uh, yeah Brad Pitt's the problem yeah yeah oh I'm sure he was <laughs> I'm sure he was he definitely was all those pranks he committed with George Clooney. Yeah, that was the problem. Brad Pitt did nothing wrong. <laughs> Brad Pitt screwed Brad Pitt. Oh, no. Um, I have no remorse for Brad Pitt. <laughs> so, do you want to hear why this movie was made? Or do you want to play a game first? You, you know what? At this point... I have no soul left, so you do whatever. All right, we're going to just keep killing your soul All right. and hear exactly how this movie was made. So get ready for this one. In 1980, a young musician, composer, songwriter by the name of Robert Kraft was, was performing with his group, the Ivory Coast, at a restaurant nightclub in New York's Greenwich Village. In the midst of a musical number, Kraft found himself unexpectedly accompanied on harmonica by someone in the audience. The man with the harmonica turned out to be bartender and aspiring actor Bruce Willis. The two became fast friends, and Willis would often turn out for Kraft's engagements and would join in the musical proceedings. Willis, who became intimately uh, acquainted with Kraft's entire musical repertoire, was mostly taken with one song called The Hudson Hawk. Kraft had come upon the concept one afternoon while walking the streets of New York. Kraft had read the newspaper article about a fierce wind that blew off Lake Michigan called the Hawk. And he, and as he wandered toward the west side of Manhattan, bracing himself against the wind, uh, corning from the distance of the Hudson River, he thought, this must be the Hudson Hawk. Kraft described the genesis of the song to Willis, exactly what I just explained to you, And the actor thought the music would be a setting fit for the theme for a classic movie character as well. Intrigued, Kraft offered Willis the opportunity to to collaborate on the song by writing lyrics. Those lyrics evolved much the way the character of Eddie Hawkins did and his friend and mentor Tommy Fivetone, or excuse me, Tommy Fivetone Messina. For many years, the song remained just a song, and the bo- both of the men vowed that if they were ever in a position to produce a film, it would be about the world's greatest cat burglar, and several years, a hit television show and Emmys and Golden Globes later, Willis found himself in that position, true to his word, he developed Hudson Hawk with Robert Kraft on the big screen, uh, needing the services of some people he's worked with from Die Hard, stuff like that. So, yeah, that's why. That's why this is a film. I mean, at best, he can say the man keeps his promises. Yeah, but I could also so I could also say that he's a crazy heckler. <laughs> That's very. Who accurate. thinks he's part of the show? Like, I hate those people. <laughs> no, man, I'm not. I'm not being annoying. I'm telling funny jokes with you. <laughs> Trying to help you out, man. She was a fat bitch, right? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, right. Come on, man. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Have we been heckled our whole careers by Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> I don't know where he came from. <laughs> you suck, man. All yeah, right. man, come on. Yeah, yeah. I know you know how to tell jokes, man. I've seen them. I know you know comedy, man. Man, I got some whiskey and some shit back like in my Lincoln. You want to come? <laughs> That'll make it funny. Yeah. That'll make you and me both oh, funny, man. I'm an Oscar winner. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so that's why that film was made. Now we get to play a little game. It's a new game. A new game? Yeah. Well, not for me, but for you. Called Judge a Book by its Cover. 
All right. Which is where we judge a movie by its poster. I'm putting on the white wig. Uh, we did this one last time, but you weren't here, so we're going to do it again, which is fine. What in the hell? <laughs> so am I going to describe to the good people at home what I'm looking at? You, you can. Delta did it last time, so it's the same thing they're seeing. All right. Um. <laughs> what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to look at this and try to guess what the movie's about. I thought it would be a good idea to try to blur the actor's face out. <laughs> So you didn't really have, like, oh, there's Bruce Willis on the cover, so this must be a Bruce Willis film. No, I tried to blur his face out so you didn't really know. But he was making a weird mouth, like, movement. Like, his his mouth looked weird. I thought maybe that's part of the character. So I decided to leave that on, and it made him look, I don't know. Like a burn victim, (laughs) Jesse? Yes, that is exactly. That is exactly how Delta described it last time. So a burn victim decides to have a... Devil May Care approach to fashion. <laughs> and stroll about town on a sunny day. Where, where's the name of it all come into play? <laughs> it's, uh, well, the, the, the words next to this, this amazing picture say, <laughs> shy, sensitive, law-abiding, polite, respectful. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I, I, all I can think of is because of how pale it looks, he looks almost like uh, the movie Powder. Yep. <laughs> Same glasses. And... <laughs> Um, oh, fuck, what was the movie with Liam Neeson? Uh, Dark Man. You ever see Dark Man? Yes. <laughs> to me, that looks like Dark Man. Uh, this looks like Dark Man 4. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, that's, that's the best I can give you, based on this blurry. So, based on this poster, you believe that the film Hudson Hawk is about an albino burn victim... Yes. ...who has a devil-may-care attitude <laughs> about fashion. Yes, who is just taking a lovely stroll... <laughs> Next to the Hudson River. <laughs> it has, okay, okay, sure. Oh, it is about it is about a albino burn victim with a devil can make care attitude towards towards fashion, who learns about the Hudson Hawk, the, yeah. the sharp wind that blows in from the Hudson, which is why he's wearing that scarf. It's literally about Robert Kraft writing the song "The Hudson Hawk." Exactly. But in this movie, he's an albino burn victim. <laughs> I'm glad you could... Which is fine, because just like last time, that is not what this movie is about. Hudson Hawk is not about a burn victim who has a devil-may-care attitude. What? So that's a terrible poster. It it does not in in any way indicate what Hudson Hawk is supposed to be about. (laughs) Terrible poster. That's how I feel. That's why we're judging books by the cover. So, okay, make your own cover. No, that's not what the game's about. We're moving on. (laughs) It's... So next, we have the next film. No! <laughs> Once again, I have blurred the faces of the people. No. But it is still so obvious what the film is. Is this... Well, don't... What? Looking at this, I have taken out the names, and I've actually very convincingly photoshopped stars into the sky. Because <laughs> 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 you, you can't tell if there used to be names. There. I blurred their faces, so maybe you can't tell who they All are. All I could see is... What is this about? It looks like a agreement has been forged between two rival cab drivers <laughs> in downtown uh, a major city in Russia, maybe St. Petersburg. <laughs> in Russia? Oh, because of the because <laughs> of the Russian name. Yeah. I thought that would help if it didn't give you an actual title. You wouldn't be forced to. Oh no, it helped me get <laughs> a new <laughs> title. It's, so two Russian cab drivers have formed an agreement <laughs> about what. Uh, well, clearly they were having problems as to whose turf was where, so now they're going to split alternate days as to so, where they're going to have So this their movie roots. is about the troubles between nighttime Russian taxi drivers. Yes, that's what this movie's about, right? Isn't that that's what... It could be! I've not seen it. I don't know what it's about. I actually probably should have looked up what it's about to tell you if you're right or not. So, So my question to you is... In this game, do you do you know what this movie is? Oh, I know what this movie okay. is. Yes, okay. I'm aware of what the film. D- do I guess what this movie is? Wait, do you I'm, know what the I'm, movie is? Well, it looks to me like it's over the top. No, it's not. Over it's the top. not over the top. No, I thought that was Sylvester Stallone on the left. Oh, that is Sylvester Stallone on is the that left. Dolly Parton on the right. That is Dolly Parton on the right. Which huh. is why next time you can join us for our 1984 comedy music film, Rhinestone. Oh. <laughs> 
Rhinestone is special. It really throws you off because apparently the name for Rhinestone in Russia is Crystal Gorsky. I thought that was a porn star who was in this, <laughs> <laughs> this movie. No, that would be Rhinestone Cowboy. Oh, I'm thinking sorry. of. Yeah, that's I'm a different sorry. film. So yeah, join us for Rhinestone, which supposedly makes no sense. <laughs> we will see. Uh, yeah. So enjoy that. That'll be next. Yay. Uh, <laughs> which means it's time for our song. Yeah. Uh, well, first we do plugs. VictorProWrestling.com. Uh, Delta's not here, but they have a show this Saturday, the 29th. So that's probably going to be like, like four days away whenever you hear this. Uh, tickets are still available, I think. Maybe they're sold out by the time you hear this. Who knows? Check it out at victoryprowrestling.com. Uh, do you have anything? Are you? I always anything? have things. What? Did I suddenly not have things? Yeah, what do you have? People, I have things. Check me on my things. Check my thing out because it looks weird. It's slightly crooked. So here are my things, all right? <laughs> <laughs> You I can... just—I want to point that out. It's always going to be crooked, okay? We wear pants. It can't. You have to go into one go leg or the right. other. I you agree. can't not. <laughs> I tried it once. And I was really uncomfortable. It, yeah. And then also, I tried like left ball, left leg, right ball, right leg. No. You can't do. That. Oh my god. I had to stretch no. myself out. What is? Yeah. I want to hit you for even thinking that would work. <laughs> now I just never mind. Now I just take a rubber band. <laughs> so you can all these things and more. Are what you can view on my Twitter, which is especially the rubber band part, which is at Atomic Identity, uh, and my handle there is chronically enfeebled. Anytime you type chronically enfeebled into any kind of social media, whether it's Tumblr or Instagram or anything else like that, you will find me. So do that. Nice. Uh, you can go to WYMT.com for all things Why Would You Make This, where you can listen to or download episodes absolutely for free if you don't like using uh, the iTunes app or the podcast app or Google Play or wherever it is you get your podcasts. Uh, we also have links to our YouTube on there where you can see our other comedy stylings as well as listen to clips from this show. Uh, I also just started adding clips from this show with other visual representation. Like, you know, like, we'll we'll talk about, like, Sylvester Stallone, and then I'll put up a picture of Sylvester Stallone. See, I like that. And all that, yeah. I would love, like, an animated version of this. So, like, whatever bullshit we're talking about just gets, like, drawn yeah, by someone. I don't know artist. any animators, so that's not going to happen for any time soon. But, Brother, uh, I'm calling you from Scotland. Yeah, I'm sure he'll uh, he barely write his own comics. Calling him out on that! <laughs> Damn, son. <laughs> so, Yeah. Tweet at us or like yell at us on Facebook or if you see us just in the crowd, just yell at us. Just also. scream. Just go into public and scream our names like a sonar. Jimmy Time, yo! Fucking Jimmy Time, yo! <laughs> and eventually you'll hear one of us go, "What? <laughs> I'm trying to masturbate. Leave me alone." So please search. Why would you make this on Twitter or Facebook or anywhere else? Uh, you can contact me, Jimmy Time, at Time Commander on Twitter. Uh, our intro music is Falling Off Your Love by Kill Paris. And taking us out today will be our version of Swing On Out a Star by Frank Sinatra. And for... <laughs> I am Jimmy Time. Please remember that without the mistakes of others, we'd be forced to endure the pain of failure ourselves. Support the arts. Boom. Um, Would you rather be a fish... <laughs> That's how you. That's how you think the song starts. That's how it always fucking starts in my head. <laughs> a fish is an animal. It's really not though. It's kind of. It's not. It's not. not. What is, what is I mean, a fish? It is an animal. It's not a crustacean. It's also, no, it's a, it's like a phylum. You know. You can't. No, you can't do kingdom that. Kingdom sort of a phylum. Thing. Yeah, it's one of those you things. No, you can't do that. It. It. No. That's right. not. <laughs> um. Yeah, you started. Man. I'll do. I'm gonna do fish, and then you do horse. I literally all I remember is. Would you rather be a pig? <laughs> I can just do would you rather and then animals and then... Just make it up, dude. All right, Who gives all right. A shit? Yeah. And then if we make it to pig, we'll, I guess we'll... I don't know. We'll trade off on pig. <laughs> all right, ready? Ready? <laughs> ready? I'm fucking... 
live for this. Would you like to swing Ooh, on a star? star? Carry moonbeams home in a jar. Hit a jar. Would you like to swing on a star? Or would you rather be a fish? Yes, a fish is a we don't even know yet that lives in the ocean. It can't write its name or have an emotion. Oh, it's smelly and it's floppy and it can't ride a bike. Would you rather be a dyke? <laughs> Well, would you like to swing on a star? On a star. Carry moonbeams home in a jar. Well, would you like to swing on a star? Oh, yes. Or would you rather be a horse? Of course. A horse is an animal that lives in a barn. It really mostly doesn't give a darn. (laughs) (laughs) It kicks up dirt and eats some hay. And at the end of the day, it'll still say, no way! So if you want to be as stubborn as a mule, you might grow up to be a horse. And if you like to swing on a star, carry moonbeams home in a jar. In that fucking jar. And if you like to swing on a star, on a star. well then you'd rather be a pig. Fucking pigs, bro. Aww. A pig is an animal that eats its own shit and messes with black people in the streets. (sighs) Fucking what the fuck? (laughs) But then he apologizes for where this is going. And it's okay, cuz blue lives matter too. What the fuck? (laughs) What did I sign my name up to? I didn't even mean dyke like a lesbian. That's the horrible. I meant dyke like the fucking object. It's a dyke. A th- you water goes over the dyke. Everyone knows this. What am I doing here? This is racist. It's sexist. And I, I voted. I voted for Hillary. I voted for Hillary. And I just want more for my life. I just want more than what I'm looking at right now. I just want to fucking be like be driving away in my car or I could swing on a star <laughs> and all the monkeys are in a zoo you're gonna keep going and all you're the gonna fucking keep going happen too and other animals land up in a stew cause you could be swinging on a star you could be swinging on a star Apologize to human beings everywhere. The preceding recording is for entertainment purposes only, and the views expressed in this podcast do not necessarily represent the views of Why Would You Make This, its owners, employees, or associates.